Welcome to Toffee TV. Everton have signed Yusuf Shamiti from Sporting. What are your feelings, Baz? Well, bloody time. <laughs> That's what my feelings are. It's gone on for ages. Um, no, it hasn't. It just, it was just a little bit of on-off, wasn't it? But mainly on. Um, yeah, listen, it's a a young player. Lots of potential. The type of signings we've talked about Everton needing to make. Yeah. I think the only the only little thing is that is he we're in need right now of a more experienced backup mm. as well for Dominic Calvert-Lewin. Unless we just accept that he's raw and, and he'll have to learn on the job. And, and I'm not 100% convinced Sean Dykes works like that. Yeah. Um, but he, he's got all the tools, six foot four, I think, isn't he? And looks quite useful with his feet. You know, good feet for a big, big man, man and all yeah. that nonsense. Um, looks quite mobile. And like I said, lots of potential. And then... That's really all we know up at the moment, don't we? Made you know, his debut last season for Sporting and, and done all right. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. Um, it's difficult to bed players in. That you know, you you want young up and coming players to come through the club, bring them in, uh, and then hopefully two three years time, their value not only to the team but also. The value you sell them on has gone up massively, and and you've got a talent there. Um, does that quite fit in with that where Everton are right now? Well, it's going to have to fit in because we need both. We need players who are going to offer something to the team, and we also need um, the ability to bring players through. And and that's you know that as a young player in a small squad, he's, I imagine he's going to get opportunities through the season. Maybe to start games, maybe to be, you know, come off the bench. There will be opportunities as long as, you know, the lad works hard, listens to what the manager wants. And, and, and listen, this is when you look around and you look at other clubs and you say, well, how, how, how are they doing it? Or, or, you know, how are they doing it differently to us? Well, what they're doing is they're giving some young players an opportunity to shine. And obviously, straight away, it doesn't always click. Um, but we've got to, we've got to let this player. Just settle into the club first of all. Give give them opportunities in and around the first team, and then go from there. And hopefully those little little moments start growing, and 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 he becomes a a vital player. So uh, let's have a little look at his numbers. So nineteen years of age, uh, fifteen million pounds. Born from Sporting, uh, sixteen games last season, nine starts, and three goals mm. so obviously people will look at that and think well he's oh, that that's not what we need what we <laughs> need is a striker who scores goals and but we're buying i suppose we're buying potential but we're buying someone who has already played games in one of europe's top divisions mm. um and similar to what we saw from onana last year onana wasn't someone who played a lot of games mm. you know but and maybe you know he'd already had one move, but this is similar, isn't it? It's about taking that, about taking the you know. It's about taking what he what what they see in him, uh, and and you know taking the edges off it and, and that potential and making that poten something out of that potential. Well, yeah, I mean if you look at the the Everton side potentially now, you've got Nathan Patterson who's twenty one, Jared Brantwaite just come back from. Uh, alone at PSV is 21. Dwight McNeil's 22. James Garner's 20, 21. Uh, Amadou Onana's 21. Youssef Chimiti coming into that is 19. You know, there's a good backbone there, a good basis in that, in and around the first team there of younger players, yeah. which is good. Yes, Onana didn't play a lot, but he comes to Everton and played more games than he's ever played. I don't know whether Chimiti will get up to the numbers that Onana did last season, but... You know, just looking at it there, we've got fifteen million pounds on the graphic. That's with add-ons, mm. it's fifteen million euros is what Everton have agreed, twelve and a half million. And he come into the he broke into their team last season, like you say, nine starts, three goals. He actually had two assists as well. Mm. So five goal contributions in the nine starts or the sixteen appearances overall. Um and we've got to look to build on that. He looks to have the tools, which yeah. is what you need. You know, the big frame. 
which will give us a starting point. You know, he's he's decent in the air. It looks like from from the bits you see. Um, and and obviously we'll have to look at that. And that's all you can go with, isn't it? It's up to him now to get into Finch Farm, do the work, do what the coaching staff want, what Sean Dykes wants, work hard, build build himself up a little bit more. The physicality is the biggest thing he'll notice from Portugal to here. Uh, can he live with that? He yeah. certainly looks quick enough. Um, and it, we, you know, we've heard people like Nathan Patterson who come down from Scotland saying I've had to put a bit more muscle mm. on to cope. Well, centre forwards have to do the same. Yeah. You have to play with your back to goal. You've got to be strong enough. And all we can do is give him the opportunity to grow. And if we can take the edges off, get him more, you know, give him the right service, then hopefully he can put the ball in and F for us. But give us that focal point. I think you're right. I think at times you'll get opportunities this season. Might be Carabao Cup games or whatever to start. But last year when we didn't have Dominic Calvert-Lewin for most of the season, Neil Mopai was the was yeah. the replacement really. Bar Ellis Sims a mm. couple of times, but it was in general it was Mopai or Damari Gray. Neither of them with the framework of what this lad is, yeah. um, and therefore it it almost helps you play the similar way with Dominic Calvert-Lewin as what mm. he would be. It'll be interesting, like I said before, whether Everton get. One in the middle of yeah. the two. One who's a, an experienced deputy for Dom. Yeah. So we can manage Dominic Calvert-Lewin yeah. properly. Um, and then this lad has no pressure on him really then. You're just trying to get him ready mm. for games. And, and you may have the other two on the bench then if he is ready to start. But it's going to be really interesting to see how he does settle. But patience is the word yeah. with him. But love him to come in and be all of a sudden start grabbing all sorts of goals. That'd be amazing. It's but a pro- only 19. It's a project, isn't it? Mm. It's a project um, that could, you know, will probably take most of his first season. Mm. You know, what, what Sean Dice did show last season was when, you know, he was willing to give Ellis Sims opportunities to start games where he felt like he needed someone up front, big up front, someone who could hold the ball. Ellis Sims never really provided that shit, opportunity. It took that opportunity. Uh, he never really provided the um, what was needed in those games. Now I'm not saying this this lad could, but it showed that the manager will go for the the bigger option when he when he needs it rather than going for Mopai. Mm. Might be some games that he would start Mopai in, but so there might be chances. If as you said there, if Everton could get the in between one, that that will make it a lot better. I think for fans, a uh, lot better for the team and a lot better for for this lad as well because he'll be able to take his time. And they'll they'll um they'll work out what the best path is for him. What you don't want is to bring a player in, and then suddenly you have to overplay him, and and that might that might ne- not necessarily help his development mm. because he's you know he's he, the pressure's getting to him or or the, the expectations getting to him, and so yeah, it's a project. We take our time, and hopefully we end up getting uh, one of those players where we all look at other teams and say. Why aren't we doing that? Why aren't we buying them before they go somewhere else? And then we buy them and we're paying 25 to 30 million or that's what we're quoting for these players that we can't get maybe. Mm. So we've gone for one early um, and let's see how it all plays out. And hopefully it does play out well because that'll give us the confidence to go for these players as yeah. well. I mean, too often we saw it with Moise Keane. You know, it was Moise Keane or Raphael Lavin. We went for Keane and it, it didn't quite work. Um Confidence was knocked, wasn't it? Confidence was knocked with maybe Vlasic and maybe a, a Luckman and people mm. like that. They never really bedded down went long enough for it. Oh. Even though we did make money on them, ironically, they never bedded down well enough. Certainly, yeah. Moise Keane didn't. <clears throat> you want you want the confidence. Teams like Brighton, um, who do it better than anyone, yeah. and Brentford, their players have bedded down. And yeah. they've reaped the rewards, and that Absolutely. confidence comes. So they put it back in. We have to do it with this fella. And let's not forget that you know the man who does play number nine, his route to that, to that you know, brought mm-hmm. in from Sheffield United, mm-hmm. having having gone on loan at uh, non-league clubs and lower league clubs, and bringing him in for one and a half million pound because you you he'd been you know David Unsworth liked the look of him in mm-hmm. a in an under twenty ones under twenty threes or whatever it was game, and suddenly he the manager liked him. You know, the manager saw Cumin thought there's a player there and mm. he had to play in different positions, of course. Wing back. But he grew yeah, famously. But he 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 
got to understand Premier League football. We took the edges off him. He bit by bit by bit. It wasn't all that pressure on him. It was never the pressure to start him. And suddenly he found himself as the number nine. Mm. And yeah, it takes it might take a couple of years, might take three years, whatever. But he's found that way. And then we're talking about replacing this fellow because you know we haven't found that. So let's not put the pressure on him. Hopefully the club don't put the pressure on him either by bringing someone in. And we've got someone for the next few years as as a as an Everton target man, which is what we're all hoping for, isn't it? Absolutely. And if he does that, we'll be like I said, the confidence grows. He can go and do it with other players then, because there's a lot out there who who we should be buying and and hopefully building and then selling them on. It's yeah. the only real way that we're going to be able to get where we want to go and compete because we can't do it on a pure cash basis as we've, yeah. we've proved. So, fingers yeah. crossed. There you go. Let us know your thoughts in the comments on the signing of Yusuf Chimiti. Um And if there's anyone out there who, who you know has, has watched them loads, give us a bit more information about them. And uh, yeah, there you go. Make sure you give this video a like. Subscribe if you haven't already. If you want more great videos, join us over on Toffee TV Premier. The link is in the description. And the QR code is coming up on the screen in a moment. See you later.